Okay, so in our previous session, uh, this week, which is on Sunday, we have discussed on uh, voltage and torque induced in a uniform magnetic field, which is uh, the arrangement, which is something like this. As you can see, uh, which is something like this. Eh? We have a permanent magnet, north side, south side. We uh, arrange this permanent magnet to make a, a magnetic field, which is uniform magnetic field, which is constant in the same uh, direction. And this vector of B is constant. So this is, uh, then we place something like this, which is a coil of wire, right? So this is the wire loop that we place inside this magnetic field. And then uh, we derive the equation for the induced voltage uh, and also the induced torque, okay, for this case, okay. So for that particular case is, uh, the loop is inside the uniform magnetic field, all right. So what, what was moving was the rotor loop, okay, the wire loop, which is uh, the representation of the rotor that was moving. But now, uh, I'm going to talk about not the rotor, but more to the uh, magnetic field, stator magnetic field that is uh, rotating, revolving, okay? So when we supply the three-phase current, it will produce the rotating magnetic field around the stator, okay? So that current will be producing RMF, which is rotating magnetic field. So when that rotating magnetic field that rotate, uh, rotate around the stator. And then at the stator, it's basically the voltage will be induced. Okay. So basically, as you can see in this, uh, let me just share a video. Uh, in this video, I've, I've already shown you this video uh, before this. So the rotating magnetic field is something like this, uh, magnetic field for three phase which machines. is uh, for three-phase system. As you can see, we supply the three-phase current to this stator, to the coil of the stator. Then what we see is something like, we actually cannot see the, the magnetic field, but it is something like this, which is uh, it, it will be rotating because of the uh, sinusoidal uh, behavior of the current, right? Field for three phase machines consider the so you can imagine that rotating magnetic field, magnetic field is something like that and uh, also in this case in this uh, slides there is a wire loop okay we are going to talk about uh, the voltage induced in this stator wire okay this is the wire loop stator coil eh? the stator coil which is the construction of the stator coil is something like this. So basically, uh, this is just for uh, calculation purpose, just for a uh, simple way of the representation of stator coil. But basically, as you can see in this video, uh, the stator coil should look like this in the actual winding of the stator, right? So it, it has the wire, okay, coming in and then, coming out of the stator. So this is the stator coil, but not only single wire, but multi-strand or many, many wires, right? And then this is another example on how we can do the winding of the stator using a wire, which is, this is the stator coil, right? So then we supply the current in this stator coil to produce the RMF or rotating magnetic field. Okay, so uh, so in this case, in this uh, case, I'm going to talk about the rotating magnetic field that we induce voltage uh, inside this stator coil. Okay, for example, uh, we assume that the voltage that will will be induced at A B side, which is A B segment, is E B A, which is E B A is pointing from A to B, right? This is our assumption, right? The actual calculation we will we will see later, but this is our assumption that uh, we assume that uh, I draw this uh, from this textbook, okay? 
it is shown like this. EBA is from A to B, which is positive at B, negative at A. So EBA across, EBA is the voltage across AB that will be developed because of the rotating magnetic field at the stator. Okay, and then ECB, okay, from B to C, and then ECD, sorry, EDC from C to D, positive is uh, positive is this this side and negative is the other side and then we are going to calculate the total induced voltage across these two terminals all right okay so let's move on so now I, i'm going to explain how do we get the magnetic field which is uh bm b equals to bm cosine omega t minus alpha how do we get this so it is important to understand this first before we go through to the calculation of the induced voltage induced voltage of each segment all right so before we go further let me just explain about uh, the the magnetic field which is behave like a cosine cosine function which is this way so this is the cosine function of B, all right? Which is B is, is actually uh, rotating as a function of cosine function like this, all right? Okay, as you can see uh, in my handwriting uh, notes. Okay, let me just show you my handwriting notes here. So this is basically uh, what we are going to start with, which is the stator coil. We have the stator and the coil is uh, which is looks like this the wire so we supply current and then the current will be go out to this wire and this is another representation of the simple representation of the stator coil right but, but actually what i've shown you just now in the youtube video uh, basically not the the construction of the stator coil is not like this which is much more uh, something that looks like uh, Something that looks like this lah. Alright. So by referring this. Okay. As you can see. Uh, you can just refer in this uh, figure. This is. The view from back. Huh? Okay. The view from. Uh, as you can see. I have drawn the eyes. So this is my eyes. I am viewing this uh, stator from this side so we can uh, redraw it like this all right you can redraw it like this as you can see this is a uh, a b segment of the coil and the other side is c d segment of the coil and this is theta okay the outside construction is theta and the inside okay the inside construction this one is rotor all right so Basically, the magnetic field will be uh, varying, will be rotating. The RMF is uh, behaving like a sinusoidal function inside this air gap, right? Inside this air gap. So, BM is at a, at a particular instant. BM is the maximum magnitude of B. Okay. BM is the maximum magnitude of B. And uh, let's say that we start the. We assume that at this instant, this coil will producing the magnetic field that start from this this line. All right. So this is the beginning line of the uh, magnetic field, and and this this magnetic field, for example, is rotating. Uh, counterclockwise direction okay and then there is an angle here as you can see which is alpha angle so alpha is the angle we call it as uh, alpha is spatial angle spatial as alpha is spatial angle that uh, uh, from 0 to 360 degree right so, and then, uh, so as you can see here, uh, alpha is the angle measured from the direction of the peak rotor, 
Okay, peak rotor flux density. So BM is the maximum flux density at, at the instant. So alpha is measured from there. All right. So, so when we supply the three phase current to this uh, coil, it will produce RMF lah. We know that, all right? So it will produce RMF in the field, uh, in the air gap. Okay, in the air gap. And B varies sinusoidally. As you can see, sinusoidally means uh, either it is cosine function or sine function, whatever. It depends on the angle, right? So B varies sinusoidal function, which is in this case, as you can see, if we start this alpha from here, if we start this alpha from here, as the B rotates, okay? So this is BM at alpha, Okay, as you can see here, at alpha equals to 0 degree, which is here, at a particular uh, uh, space here. Okay, alpha is 0. And at that instant, B equals to BM, right? And then, let's say if alpha is somewhere around here. Okay. Alpha is 90 degree, which is, which is this this blue lines okay this blue line let me just when alpha is 90 degree angle at that instant b is zero okay so as you can see at alpha zero at alpha zero which is somewhere here which is somewhere here b is bm right and at alpha 90 degree b is zero and then at alpha somewhere around here, which is 180 degree, B is negative. B is negative BM, which is uh, as you can see the arrow, uh, the arrow here at the bottom, the arrow shows that uh, the flux is from uh, stator to rotor, right? The other one, which is the top one, the arrow is from rotor to stator. That is the positive. Lah. This one, uh, the bottom one is the other way around, which is negative. So negative BM and so and so forth. If we uh, check on alpha at 270 degree also, it will be zero. And back to the, uh, the initial the initial starting point, right? Okay, so we can say that B is moving, which is B is rotating in space in space with cosine function. Okay, as you can see, B is rotating in space with cosine function that we can uh, simply represent B in, in terms of uh, cosine function, which is something like this. B is BN cosine alpha, all right? So B is BM cosine alpha. So B is varying inside this rotor or inside this air gap as a function of cosine function. So that one is for rotating magnetic field at the stator. All right. So how about the rotor? Let's say this rotor, because this is an AC machine, AC machine, this rotor is also moving which is rotating, okay? This rotor is also rotating within the stator at the angular velocity of omega i. We assume that this rotor is also rotating at angle of omega m, okay? Angle of omega m. m refers to the mechanical speed, okay? Mechanical speed. Uh, omega e is electrical speed. We can assume that uh, rotor is moving at omega, all right? So this rotor is moving at omega m. So now, what is the magnitude of flux density vector B? So now, if this rotor is moving at omega m t, sorry, this rotor is moving at omega m, meaning that we can represent the uh, Magnitude of the B, which is BM cosine omega t minus alpha. Okay. 
So this is a rotating magnetic field that moving at the speed of omega m. Just now, in this page, basically b equals to b m cosine alpha is something like uh, we can say that this is a static. Okay, this is the RMF or which is static, static RMF. This is uh, rotating RMF with a rotor moving at omega m. All right. So we use this equation to derive the voltage induced at the stator coil. All right. So we're going to use this B equals to B m cosine omega, omega t minus alpha to derive the uh, voltage eh? the voltage uh, at each of the segment later but before this before that uh, there is another explanation which is okay we are going to derive and find the e in right e in of the particulars uh, each of the segment but before that uh, when we want to derive the equation of voltage induced, basically we we are going to use this sort of equation, right? We use E equals to V cross B L. Okay, we use this equation in our past session when I talk about uh, which is uh, the uh, arrangement like this. We have the the coil. Okay, we have the coil. Coil of wire. Okay, inside the uniform magnetic field. This this one is uniform magnetic field, which is uh, when we supply current, for example, okay, the force will be acting. The force will be acting on each of the segment, not voltage. Basically, the force will be acting on each of the segment that will also cause the torque, okay, torque of this, this rotor wire. Right, this rotor coil. So that is the situation where we can use this. So we can use that equation E equals to V cross B L for this situation. Meaning that for this case, the coil is moving in stat stationary magnetic field. That but for current case, for current situation. What we are going to calculate the induced voltage is basically uh, now we are talking about the magnetic field that is rotating, that is moving. Okay, so in our case now, I'm going to talk about the moving or rotating magnetic field. So we can imagine that this is the situation in actual machine uses something like this. All right. We start it from uh, this particular angle, angle of alpha, which is, and then we have the BM here, which is the maximum uh, B at this instant. We rotate this using uh, omega. I rotate this using omega, omega M, right? So rotation happen so when the rotation happen as you can see b is to this direction right b is to that direction which is upward direction okay we know that at this particular instant b is upward direction now how about v because we are going to find v cross b right we are going to define or calculate v cross b so how about v at this particular instant you can imagine that uh, let's say uh, something like this at the bottom of this uh, notes eh? as you can see for example i am standing at the bus stand here i am standing at the bus stand what i see uh, the car is moving toward right direction right with speed of v okay so I am the observer. What I see the car is moving is at the speed of V. Okay. What if I uh, I jump to that car? Okay. Which is uh, the observer is now from from this car, looking at this bus stand, looking at that bus stand, uh, looking at this bus stand. 
So basically, my my speed v is the same as the speed of car, right? Okay. So what I can see, which is for this bus stop or bus stand, uh, this bus stop or bus stand is also moving at the relative speed. Okay, relative speed of v as well to the opposite direction. So that is the concept of relative speed. So very similar to this case when we are talking about the rotating magnetic field and then we are going to calculate the induced voltage inside the coil which is called the coil is actually stationary the magnetic field which is moving right so we are going to derive that voltage inside that coil we assume that uh, this b is moving to counter clockwise direction so this b is moving to the counterclockwise direction at that particular instant we see that v is v ray which is relative relative speed okay okay so uh, at this particular instant the vector of b is upward and v real is to the right okay so so by understanding that sort of concept okay similarly we can apply for uh, the bottom side here, the bottom side. So B is when this alpha, when this alpha arrive to 180 degree, okay. Of course, uh, B is showing to the bottom, right? So B is showing to the bottom, which is BM at this instant, okay. So B is now, the direction of B is to the bottom, okay. To the downward and then the v rail is to the left okay so we understand that then we can start uh, by that assumption we can start calculating uh, the voltage induced at each of the segment all right so we start with segment a b so at the segment a b we assume the polarity of e eba is to that direction which is this is plus this is minus right as you can see we assume that eba is from the textbook and from this our earlier assumption eba is from a to sorry this is minus this is positive okay so eba is from a to b okay so we assume that the direction of induced voltage is to that direction. Okay. So now I'm going to calculate at the segment AB. Okay. Where is the segment AB? So at the segment AB is actually at the bottom one. All right. So we have this wire loop, which is something like this. AB is the bottom, the bottom one which is at that particular instant, alpha is at 180 degree. So at the alpha 180 degree, we calculate the induced voltage of this segment, okay, the, the AB segment, which is EBA. So at that particular instant, we see that uh, the vector of V rail and B is this one. So from this, okay, so V cross B, V cross B for this one is uh, the, the induced voltage is actually from this page to the out of the page. Okay. So the induced voltage for V cross B, you can use the right or left. Uh, sometimes I use the screw. So this is the screw. All right. If we rotate this screw counterclockwise, which is V cross B, from V to B, right? Which is we are loosening the screw, right? We loosening the screw, meaning the direction of uh, movement of the screw is actually uh, backward, okay? Backward, which is out of the pitch, all right? So the direction or the magnitude, the vector of EBA is actually out of the pitch, okay? So we can calculate EBA using VBL, right? Using that, uh, EBA in this case, which is 
as you can see a negative sign or minus sign has been used because the the actual assumption was uh, that direction eh, from a to b but from uh, the the vector of b and v all right we we know that the uh, induced voltage is actually out of the pitch so this is which is the opposite direction to the, our earlier assumption okay opposite to our earlier assumption that is why we use negative v and then b is bm cosine omega t minus 180 degree substitute b okay and then l okay so we rearrange this equation finally we get negative v b m l cosine omega t minus 180 degree all right so that is for segment a b for segment a b e b a is negative because uh, in our earlier assumption we assume that e b a is from a to b but in actual one when we do the uh, rearrangement of the vector referring to the case of a uh, rotating magnetic field that voltage will be induced in the stationary coil of stator so we have this v relative to b so we i'm going to talk about v here is the speed the velocity not the voltage right so v is to that direction and b to the direction we get EBA is actually negative, 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 huh? negative direction which out of the page. So we substitute uh, the value of alpha because at that particular instant alpha is one hundred and eighty degree. Okay. So we get uh, this uh, final equation for the EBA. Okay, we get this final voltage build up, which is the opposite direction, direction to the polarity the actual uh, assumption of the voltage polarity okay and then we going to we are going to calculate bc but actually at the bc at the bc at this particular segment there is no voltage induced like uh, in our previous session as well there is no uh, voltage will be induced at the segment of bc and the segment of da okay because uh, when we calculate the v cross b basically what we get is the induced voltage is perpendicular to l so there's no it doesn't bring any meaning if this is l okay the voltage is perpendicular so meaning that the voltage is zero if this voltage vector is something like that okay from positive to negative across this l so that means there is a value for the voltage but in that particular case the voltage is uh, perpendicular to the l which is to the segment uh, bc so at that particular instant for segment bc it is actually no voltage induced and then for segment cd now as you can see we are going to calculate EDC, okay? We are going to calculate EDC. At this instant, alpha is zero degree. As you can see from figure of the previous, uh, previous one. So that is the segment CD, right? Segment CD. At this particular instant, alpha is zero degree. So at segment CD, alpha is zero degree, right? So at that particular instant, we know that B is pointing upward. And then V relative is pointing to the right. Okay, V relative pointing to the right. So how about V cross B? V cross B. So we can calculate V cross B similar to the uh, screw base assumption. We use a screw when we rotate that screw from counterclockwise direction rotate the screw to counterclockwise direction what actually happen is we are loosening the screw 
So we lose. The screw is loosened. So that uh, the direction of movement of the screw is basically from the page to the outward direction or direct directed out of the page lah. So you see here directed out of the page, which is this symbol. Okay. So this is the induced voltage at C D C D segment. So we can calculate this the E D C using this equation again V B L. So at this instant, we assume that E D C is from uh, C to D, right? Let me just uh, show you different color from this to this, okay? Which is this particular direction of E D C, meaning that the same direction of the what we get here, which is out of the page. So we get here is out of the page, which is the same as our earlier assumption. That is why there is no negative for this calculation. So E D C is V B L. So we substitute B V B M cosine omega t. Okay, L. And then finally we get V B M L cosine omega m t. So V B M L cosine omega t. So that is another equation at E D C segment. Sorry, at segment C D. So we have at segment A B, which is this voltage. The bottom one, and then finally we calculate uh, the developed voltage, the induced voltage at segment D A, okay, and also very similar to the situation at segment B C. At segment D A also we get zero voltage, okay, zero voltage at this segment because of the reason that I have been uh, that I have explained earlier, okay. So now, using that four uh, four segments uh, induced voltage calculation, okay, we can calculate the induced voltage. So total induced voltage. So we have this sort of wire coil, total induced voltage, which is here, right? So we can calculate the total induced voltage. Using this particular equation, E in equals to E B A plus E D C because uh, uh, E this one at this segment D A is E A D is zero. Okay, similarly, E C B is also zero. E C B is also zero. So the effective voltage was only at E B A and E D C. So we substitute EBA and EDC, which is this is EBA and plus EDC, okay, plus EDC. Then uh, actually we can apply the uh, trigonometric identity for this particular cosine function. For this particular cosine function, we apply the tri trigonometric identity. Let's say you can use your calculator. Okay, let me just uh, use my calculator. Let's say uh, uh, I have a 220 angle. Okay. Uh, I'm going to prove that uh, this, this, this particular fragment trigonometric identity here okay this trigonometric identity let's say theta is 220 so 220 is it the same as negative cosine 220 minus 180 degree which is 40 degree right so this particular part is 40 degree is it the same Cosine 220, is it the same as negative cosine 40 degree? Okay, 
we can use this sort of uh, scientific so cosine 120 is uh, trigonometric function cosine 220 equals to cosine is negative which one this is negative 0 0.766 right so how about cosine how about cosine 40 degree positive uh, cosine 40 degree if positive 766 0 0.766 all right so what if, that is why we put negative so meaning that uh, we can use this trigonometric identity to to further uh, uh, simplify eh, this in e in equation which is uh, we can substitute this cosine omega mt minus 180 degree to cosine omega mt to negative cosine omega mt right so using that trigonometric identity actually we have this equation we end up in this equation e in equals to v b m l cosine omega mt plus v b m l cosine omega t which is two times which is double okay so basically what happened here is the induced voltage is double meaning that we have two which is two v b m l cosine v m omega t so we get e in is 2 b b m l cosine omega m t okay so i have finished explaining this slide eh? which is uh, we get the final induced voltage across that across that two terminal of the coil of stator which is E in equals to 2 V B M L cosine omega M T. Alright. Which is double. The voltage at the terminal was double. Okay. Alright. So next is uh, we can further uh, simplify that equation by relating some other equation. Which is uh, we know that V is R omega. Okay. We have learned this in our previous session related to the rotating uh, uh, vector, rotational motion, right? We have V equals to R omega, so we can substitute V equals to R omega in, in this equation. So V, it becomes V R omega M, B M L cos omega T, right? So uh, then we can further rearrange this equation. 2 RL omega M B M cosine omega M T. Okay. And then we know that phi is B A. Okay. From phi is B A. And A is actually the cross sectional area, which is you can see. So A is cross sectional area. Alright. So 2 R times L, right? Which is A. Then uh, we can uh, substitute 2 RL as A. Okay. We substitute 2RL as A. Okay, so now we can relate this phi which is 2RL BM, which is this one is A. Okay, and then since we know that for two pole stator, two pole stator, uh, mechanical speed is equals to electrical speed, and also we can represent it in the form of omega only. Okay, so now we can further express this equation to E in phi omega cos omega t. Alright, uh, if we consider some number of terms which is nc, we can just uh, uh, use this expression which is E in equals to nc phi omega cosine omega t. Okay, so the sort of explanation on how uh, the voltage will be induced which will be developed at the stator 
when we have the uh, rotating magnetic field around the stator. Okay, when we supply the current. Okay, when we supply the current. Uh, let's say uh, we supply the current to the stator. What happen is part as stator you can see one perpendicular. Main not this one uh, as you can see uh, which one uh, which is something that looks like this uh, the rotating magnetic field rmf so once we have rmf around the stator actually this rmf also will uh, induce voltage uh, at the stator coil just this is the stator coil okay the copper coil here is the stator coil so this RMF, this RMF is actually from current, the three-phase current, but from that RMF will also develop the uh, voltage at the stator coil. Magnetic field for three. Okay, so uh, I think that's all for today's session because I just Phase machine. going to explain this part. Because in uh, uh, the talk in AC machine, we are going to to discuss about we are going to discuss about this later because uh, we don't have time now. Maybe around uh, week eight after the midterm uh, session, midterm recess. Okay, uh, after midterm break, we will continue uh, to this part, which is induced talk in an AC machinery. Then we don't. Have uh maybe around two hours we will finish all of the slides okay before we move on to the fourth topic the dc machine okay so hopefully that around week eight we will finish this uh topic three and then uh, from uh, week nine we will start on so uh, we will from week nine we will start discussing about topic 4 which is uh, DC machinery okay so I think that's all for our meeting today um, you can always check in your e-learning system for any assessment that I will be posting for example uh, we all of you have already finished the question uh, sorry quiz 2 questions all right all of the 12 students has have submitted then i will check on this letter then we will we'll return it back to you okay and also about the test 2 sorry test 1 i will upload it uh, maybe around here after the transformer because test 2 will be covering topic 1 and topic 2 just introduction and transformer so in top in test 1 uh, ac machinery is not covered it will only cover uh, uh, questions related to topic 2 and topic 1. Okay, that one is for test 1. Then, after we finish SC Machinery Fundamental, also I will post another, I will be posting another quiz, which is quiz 3. And so, to the DC Machinery Fundamental, also will be another quiz. So, there are four quizzes overall. And then, uh, hopefully, be Within the semester break, you can uh, complete test one. Okay, and then the instruction for uh, assignment, which is to evaluate the communication skill, just CLO3, PLO4. Okay, uh, I will be posting that instruction, the instruction about the uh, assignment later, maybe uh, from week eight or week eight, week nine onwards. Lah. Okay, so far that's all for today. So hopefully that we can, uh, I can see you again after semester break. All right. So thank you. We finish up to this time, yeah. Thank you, doctor. Okay, sama. Thank you, doctor.